I've got a special guest here today, Mo, aka Alpha Slice. Follow this guy on Instagram if you like money. And if you like what we're going to talk about today, find time, buy pieces, watches. What we're going to be talking today, guys, is about alternative investments, in particular, the hot timepiece watch market today on today's Wealth Talk. So look, there's been a lot of talk out there about NFTs, fine wines, Ferraris, watches. A lot of rich people are chasing a lot of really nice things right now and one thing that i've talked about for a long time guys is if you're investing you have to be diversified part of that diversification 10 to 20 percent of your portfolio should be in alternative investments today what i brought in my man mo for is to talk about the watch market we've seen a lot of crazy things going on in the watch market especially since covid watch is going 40 50 percent above retail i wanted to bring that back down to ground though and let's remember over a long period of time, just like stocks, bonds, real estate, watches, in particular names like Patek Philippe that we're going to talk about today, names like Rolex, have been a really good store of wealth and have had returns in many cases better than the stock market, better than real estate. So I think it's an investment worth talking about. But I wanted to talk about some stories of what's going on in today's market for you guys here today on YouTube with my man Mo. Introduce yourself and tell our audience what's going on with the March market today. Yeah, thank you, Rob, for having me. I mean, this is like surreal being on YouTube. <laughs> but yes, um, so my name is Mo. Um, I'm Lebanese, but I came to the country like four years ago, started a business, an online business where I teach nursing students how to pass their board exam. Long story short, this business make a lot of money and I want to invest in something. Um, I want to invest in real estate, but not like the real estate market is like so hot. So I accidentally bought my first piece. So I bought I bought a uh, Patek Philippe Nautilus 5890 um, in rose gold. Rose gold. And I have this watch with me. Um, so it was the Drake watch. It is the Drake Oh, watch, so. man. For all, all you hip-hop fans out there, look at this bad boy. Yeah, that is a beautiful watch. Tell me a little, little bit about your story with that watch and also what's going on now. So one of my mentors has a uh, Patek Philippe Nautilus, the stainless steel, the 5711. And that watch, in retail price, it cost uh, 38000 And then it got discontinued. Uh, beginning of last year, I mean the end of last year, and now the prices went up to like a hundred thousand, hundred twenty thousand, which is super crazy for a stainless steel steel watch. But this watch, when I bought it, it was one hundred and sixty five when the pandemic started, one hundred and sixty five thousand. And two months later, uh, Drake wore this watch on one of his videos, and prices start going up. Now those go for two hundred thousand. Wow. There are some people on eBay pricing for two hundred thirty-five, but their actual price is like two hundred thousand, and they will keep going up. So when this watch gets discontinued, it's it's gonna uh, be worth half a uh, quarter of a million. So when a watch gets discontinued, what what does that mean to the market? What does that mean to a collector? I assume that's a good thing. Yeah. So so that's a limit. So this watch is already limited production. Okay. It takes uh, fifteen days, two hundred people to produce this watch. They only produce two watches um, a month. Wow. So this watch is very limited. And once they stop production, that's when the value goes up. Okay. So when it's discontinued, it means they, it's not in production anymore. And Patek Philippe is one of the oldest brands out there. So you know, there's yes. watches that have gone well over a million dollars at auction. So, you know, tried and true brand. Exactly. All the wealthy guys, they have Patek Philippe business guys, high net worth people. It's called a heavy hitter, but it's classic. It's not one of those like big Richard Mills yeah, that yeah, yeah. is gonna get a lot of attention. No, this slides under the radar. But if you're wealthy and you see someone else wearing this or you know about this, then you know you you know where they are at. Those who know know. Yeah, th th exactly. That's that's what I want to say. Those who know know. Basically, what what else did you bring? So um, so I got this watch, and then I said I. I always hear about Rolexes, right? Yeah. Because Rolexes, I mean, they've been like a hundred plus years in the industry and they are like the first company that produced a waterproof watch. It's, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, okay. it, it's crazy. So I went and I bought For the Submariner. Yeah. Yeah. So I went and I bought this watch 
um, in the aftermarket. I, for some reason, I just fell in love with Show it. Show that watch, beautiful watch. So it is. Look at blue, it's, blue, it's, blue, blue, blue on blue. So it's a blue bezel, blue face. That's the Smurf. They call it the Smurf in the aftermarket. And the only reason I bought it, I mean, I didn't know about it, but when I knew about it, dude, I love this watch. So I started doing my research. I asked about it. And this watch, there was rumors that's going to be discontinued a week after. And that's white gold, not sterling silver. Right? Yes. This yeah. is this is a white, because the Smurf only comes in white gold. Mm -hmm. So this is 18 karat white gold. Um, I got this watch for 41000 and it got discontinued a month later, uh, I mean, a week later, and now they go for 50000 Wow. wow. What, did, what were they originally when they came out? So originally, th those came out retail price. This was um, released in 2008, 11000 11000 wow. So like, I would say since like 2015, 16, those go for retail 30000 Wow. Okay. But then it got discontinued around Almost the price. Almost quadrupled over that period exactly. of time. Exactly. Yeah. And if you hold those watches for a longer period of time, they're gonna be continue to go up. Yeah. They'll continue to go up those um time, those uh discontinued. This watches. next one's an interesting story. Yeah, so this next one, I said I'm not gonna buy retail anymore, but uh I'm not gonna buy in the aftermarket anymore. But when you are in like when when you love watches and you want to invest in watches, um you need to build networks just like any industry. So I started go in into so I live in Miami you know the design district there's a Rolex store over there so I started building a relationship with them and I bought a couple of watches then I told them my story they loved it there's this Lebanese girl over there who is the <laughs> assistant of the owner and then I don't know how it happened but they got us in the, the VIP room and we start talking about watches two hours just talking about watches and my story a little bit and whatever so I had this watch that I bought in the aftermarket for a friend Show of mine. That one there. That's so cool watch. This is called the Pepsi. Blue, blue and red, just like the Pepsi logo. So yeah, yeah it's so called it's the Pepsi called, Rolex. With that, with that Jubilee bracelet, yeah, which people yeah. love. So um, this one still has the tags on it. Yeah, this, you can tell he's a collector. Brand new. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't wear this one. I actually have two of those. Um, but a friend of mine wanted it, and he said, "Hey, can you get it for me?" So I have a couple of people who you know uh sell watches in the aftermarket i got it for him for nineteen thousand. now when i was telling the story to the lady at the rolex store she said oh mo how in, like how in the name of god you buy it in the aftermarket like you should have came to me i said i'll return it just uh do, do you have one i'll take it she said but it's gonna take two three months but when we moved to that vip room and we started talking to that owner and you know like the team they introduced me to the whole team mm -hmm. And then he said, go get him the Pepsi. So she went inside to his office and got me the Pepsi and How re much? retail price, 9,000. Oh, 9,000 for a watch you just paid 19,000 exactly. for. Yeah. But actually that wasn't a bad price in terms of secondary market. They're going no, over 20,000. They go, they go 22,000, 23,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the moral of that story is, I think if you are a watch collector, you want to be a watch collector, if at all you can avoid paying secondary market prices like in this case you're talking about a what do you say a ten thousand dollar uh pet, yeah yeah ten thousand dollar watch going for twenty two twenty three thousand dollars you don't really want to do that it's just like any other asset class we talk about whether it's stocks bonds the most important two things are the price you pay for it and the price you sell for it so if you're buying a watch that someone like mo was able to pick up for 10 grand that on the secondary market's going over for 20 and we know watch appreciation has been good let's call it 10 percent a year once the market corrects like every market does you could be talking about a seven to eight year period of time based off of normal appreciation before you get your money back so you don't want to do that so you need to start building those relationships with your local jeweler you know uh places that are authorized rolex dealers or if you've got some friends like I do, like Mo, start building relationships with him. I've been looking at a sea dweller. He, he's, he's got the insight for that for me. But you don't want to be paying those secondary prices, guys, because that's getting caught up in that euphoria to which right now is very hot. I'm sure you're seeing this with other watches, APs, Richard Miles, all those watches right now, secondary market, super hot. Super hot, super hot. Yeah. And so the thing about watches also this is a global phenomenon. The U.S. is not the largest purchaser of fine timepieces. It's actually China. Over 24% of those watches are going to China. A lot of billionaires in China. China is a country that loves tangible assets. So I don't think that 
quite that thirst for these types of watches is going to be going away anytime soon. Even when you look at rich countries, very small countries, uh, 12 million people in a country like Singapore, they're buying 5% of the world's watches. So there's a lot of very high net worth people, especially as this is something we've talked about. You're starting to see the dollar come under pressure as our country and foreign central banks, quite honestly, around the world continue to print more and more. We're all worried about inflation, right? Because us, stimulus bills and all these things, free money that's going out there, we know eventually is going to be inflationary. When those things happen, what you want to hold is tangible assets. And that's the appeal of limited edition, high quality assets in many cases, like these watches, also precious metals that are involved. So even the utility of these is much higher. So, you know, a, a great, great thing. Any other tips in terms of the first watch collector? If someone's going to go out there and invest in one watch right now, what do you think is that one watch that people should buy? I mean, stainless steel submariners, they okay. they never lose uh, I mean, any Rolex watch, yeah. right? And it, depending on your budget, but any stainless steel watch, it will never lose in value. If you get it at retail price, which I don't advise anyone not getting it, getting mm -hmm. it in the second, secondary market, but if you get it at retail price, then you make yourself at least $10,000. I've got to ask, what's the one watch that's on your bucket list that you own, don't own today? And I know you, I, you're already thinking about it. <laughs> what is that one watch that, that you're after? So I want a Richard Mill. Okay. I'm going to stretch myself to get there. But again, I want to be smart. I don't want to, because this to me is an investment. Yeah. Richard Mills are a great investment, but you've got to put a lot of money up front. What type of numbers are we talking about with the one you like? 250,000. 250, quarter of a million dollars for a watch. But I mean, that's not too far off from where um, your uh, paddock is, right? So look, guys, at the end of the day, what we wanted to do is give you an introduction for those of you guys who are thinking about, hey, I've got some extra money. I want to diversify my portfolio a little bit. What are some of the things I should look at? Why I like watches in particular, I think it was a great recommendation in terms of what Mo talked about. For $10,000, $11,000, $12,000 for some of these Rolexes, if you buy them at the right time, stainless steel, that's relatively affordable for a lot of people. You know, we talk about classic cars, it's a much higher barrier to entry there. We talk about fine arts, it's a much higher barrier to entry there. Uh, also in terms of storing them, you don't need to have a big home where you have to have uh, a wine room or anything like that. Watches are very easy. One thing I did talk to Will about, you wanna keep them on a, on a winder though, buy yourself an inexpensive winder box. So you're not constantly turning that crown because that puts a lot of damage into them. If it's something you do not, you're buying just for an investment, um, keep all your, your even, if, even if you're not, make sure you keep all your boxes, your receipts, the more information that you have on those things, the more valuable it's going to be once you hit that secondary yeah, market. Even certificates, tags yeah. like this, you should keep everything. Everything that you have that gives it more validity, validity, validity and credibility when you sell that into the secondary market. So just a little taste today. Appreciate you, Mo, for being here. Amazing watch collection. I'm going to bring him back in a year from now because I know this thing's going to triple how much money he's making right now. Online businesses. Follow this guy. Alpha Slice on Instagram. YouTube, what about your YouTube channel? It's Alpha Slice. Alpha Slice too. Follow this guy. More to come. Thanks for watching this week's Wealth Talk.